Hi, this is Graphically Alex, and welcome to the channel, or welcome back. Here we cover a lot of fat acceptance issues, as well as issues involving obesity, and especially super morbid obesity. So if that's something that interests you, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. Today what I want to do is I want to actually respond and introduce myself, so to speak, to cute fat queer. Like I wanted to look at their content or her content. I'm just going to say her. I don't know. I'm trying to be somewhat respectful, but I'm just not sure. I didn't see anything listed. So I'm going to respond to her. I'm going to look at all of the stuff that's pinned on her profile because I just want, I feel like it's a good example of what we can do to respond to fat acceptance rhetoric. I have been trying to be better about like being a little bit more, mm, I want to say diplomatic just because at the end of the day, it's not about my ego or anybody else's ego. It's about actually confronting these ideas and dismantling them. So I had to actually refilm this, I will say, because I didn't like the way that I did it before. And I had to like reflect and be like, okay, let's come back to center. <laughs> I'm a little bit because I haven't been having sugar and I think it's getting to me about a week in. I'm like, ooh, but I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get started. Let's do this. People like to say, aren't you concerned for your health? So, if I were to put myself in her shoes, I have had people say this type of thing to me before. I'm trying to be empathetic. <laughs> it's becoming an exercise in empathy. It is annoying. So, I've gotten questions like that. Um, again, I feel like every time I, I think about this, I have to think about it in terms of veganism. I know that upsets people, but I've had really horrible experiences with vegans. I think because I was involved within a, a very toxic vegan community a few years back. And so one of the things that they said to me was, oh, I don't like seeing you eat ice cream and animal products on camera. You're just killing yourself. And I remember seeing that comment. I remember that it did nothing. So it did absolutely nothing to change what I was doing. And it's because I think a lot of times people say that because they think that they can kind of tell based on a snapshot. But I was actually keto at the time. So I was usually taking a break from it when I was having that. And so when that person said that, it was when I was taking a scheduled break. So I felt like I was in control. And I just, it feels like there's no, like that person's not getting the whole picture. So you completely discount what they say. You don't consider it at all. And it becomes a lot more about making the other, like making the person who's saying it, they want to like feel holier than thou a lot of the time. That's how it came across to me. So that's probably how it's coming across to her when people ask her stuff like this. So let's see what she says to respond. As a fat person, aren't you concerned? Yeah, I'm concerned about my health, but it has nothing to do with fat. So this is a very, very, very bad take. So as you can see, she's already completely indoctrinated into this ideology. So she's already making the complete wrong take here. And this is where the two things can be really toxic, where you can have like people who do genuinely concern troll, and then you have the fat acceptance rhetoric. So it's like she's in the complete wrong way of thinking about this. The fact is, you know what you're eating, cute, fat, queer. You can lie to other people, but you can't lie to yourself. 
you know exactly what you're eating, you know how much, you know the whole thing. It doesn't matter what somebody else says, you yourself know the whole picture. So you know that you're likely overeating. You know that you don't feel well. You know that you're sick. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so threatened by these types of questions. Like if somebody were to ask me that now, I don't think it would bother me because I would just kind of be like water off a duck's back, you know, because I feel a lot better than I used to. At the time when the vegan said that to me on my channel, I was threatened by it because I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good at all. So there's a little bit of something that can, you know, that's exposed there. So it's, it's interesting to see. Because again, as I'm getting better, I don't remember a lot of this. And I feel like I have to be reminded of these types of lines of thinking and how I felt similarly. It has things to do with the environment that I live in. Social determinants of health. So it's hard for me to remain calm when she posts this. I think because when she says social determinants of health and has cortisol on the screen, it's a complete incongruence. It's something incredibly physical, which is cortisol. And she's saying social in the background. And that is very, very misleading. And this is a huge issue, which some of you guys like that I pointed out, the sort of manipulative nature of TikTok. In my last video, I'm going to keep doing that. But that is very manipulative. Cortisol is not a social determinant of health. It's completely physical. And the issue is she's blaming stress and all these different things for her possible health issues. Um, I believe she says the oppression she feels. Let's hear her say that. It has to do with the oppression that I feel. So she's saying that the oppression and the stress that she lives under causes her cortisol to go up. Well, what if I were to tell you that having a high amount of body fat on your body, especially excessively high, so... I'm going to keep a spade a spade. She looks super morbidly obese. When you are in that kind of category, you have so much fat on your body, it absolutely does affect your hormones, particularly estrogen. So when you have a large amount of adipose tissue, it produces and stores estrogen. If your estrogen is elevated, it has a sort of symbiotic relationship. I don't know any other word to say right now, but it has a corollary or something relationship with cortisol. So if your estrogen goes up, your cortisol goes up. So if you actually cared about your cortisol, then you would care about the fat. So you can acknowledge that high cortisol causes health issues, but you can't acknowledge that high body fat causes high cortisol. You only are trying to weaponize hormones against other people. But the fact is your cortisol, your cortisol is so elevated because of the very fact that you are super morbidly obese. It doesn't matter what anybody does. It doesn't matter how anybody treats you. Your cortisol will remain way too high. And it is a part of the picture that does involve hypothyroidism, which is especially likely in a super morbidly obese person. You have to have energy from somewhere. And if it's not thyroid hormone, then it's going to be adrenaline. And adrenaline and cortisol are also connected. So I don't know if this is her best argument. Not having access to good medical care or food or shelter. Sure, but do you have that yourself? So I would assume that she does have those things. So if she still isn't healthy, then she shouldn't be using that for her case. So she's trying to make a sort of argument for every fat person 
but the way that she framed it, it's more so about her. So if she's not struggling for shelter or food or medical care, she may argue she's struggling for proper medical care, but I would assume she's not struggling for food or shelter. So why is she saying that? It's weird, right? It, it comes across, to me, it comes across as manipulative. It comes across as trying to paint a picture and trying to find excuses and reasons for the way that you feel, even if you don't even have these problems. That affects my health, not my body size. So with all due respect, this is completely wrong. This is so wrong that it's hard for me to stay calm. I think because, again, I've had some incredibly hellish experiences with my health, that it was so connected to my size, that when I hear her say that, it makes me feel like she is completely discounting what I, her, and many other fat people have suffered and dealt with. And the fact that she's doing that to perform for an ideology is so incredibly sickening to me. I could almost cry if I thought about it too deeply. Because this stuff is life and death. It is. At your size, this is life and death. I don't care what you say, especially because she's on the older side. I know that she must feel like absolute trash. I felt horrible. I felt so horrible, like hellish levels of horrible being around 400 pounds or almost 400 pounds. The highest I got to was 383. That's really close to 400. And I was so sick. And it wasn't even just the weight. It's like how hypothyroid I was at that time and how crazy I felt and just all these things combined. It's like I cannot imagine how she's feeling at that age. I just can't even imagine. You've been lied to. I've been lied to. So I don't understand why lying to other people is helpful then if you feel like you've been lied to and you didn't like it then why would you do it to somebody else again i i feel like if she would have gotten on here and she would have said you know i don't always feel my best but it is what it is right or she's like i don't feel that great but there's nothing i can do about it just something like that then i could kind of understand a little bit more because I've had those feelings of hopelessness. I feel like I could understand her better. But to truly and honestly say, or to honestly think that your size, your fatness has nothing to do with your health condition and that it's a lie, it's just clearly you're lying. And once you actually wake up from that lie, you become kind of angry. Yeah, so I covered a person, her name is Rosie, and she has recently woken up from fat acceptance as a lie, from that sort of ideology, rhetoric, etc. And it did make her very angry too. You know, I think maybe there are certain things within diet culture that are lies but fat acceptance is just as much of a lie so rule number one for being lied to is don't fall for an even worse one after that that's my advice anyway why would they lie to us about this capitalism they're making money off of you plain and simple so I don't know if she's just invoking capitalism to try to score some kind of political point or if she's just, I would even say she's probably just trying to manipulate people that are more left leaning or far, you know, even far left. Uh, I think that she's trying to 
use this kind of guilt that's associated with the word capitalism, you know, class guilt or anything money related to try to manipulate somebody to listen to what she's saying. So I, I find it to be incredibly manipulative. Even if I were to take that logic, you could still twist it around and say that the sort of more crony capitalistic thing, you know, I'm not an anti-capitalist at all myself, but I am anti-crony capitalism and I don't like corporatism. If she were to be honest about that, she would understand that industries make so much more money off of people being fat. And this is a talking point that completely debunks that argument every time, but it's very real. If you're overweight, you probably spend almost three times as much as a thin person on clothes, health care, and food. Those three things, your expenses skyrocket in those three areas as a fat person. And those three industries, they really enjoy that you are fat. 100%. So the bullies are out. And they're saying shitty things about me. So I find a lot of fat acceptance activists, they, they really... You know, there are certain brands of them. There are some of the angry ones. There are some of the ones that try to pretend to be reasonable, which would be like a Hannah Talks Bodies, for example. And then there are the ones that kind of play the victim. And to me, a lot of them play the victim in terms of haters and stuff. I think, again, they always are trying to weaponize guilt and shame and stuff even though they're saying that how dare you guilt and shame me you'll see within this tiktok she's really shaming anybody that criticizes her and she could be saying that it has to do with her haters or whatever but again you have to speak about very specific things like respond to a comment for example or respond to a very specific statement and she doesn't do that. You'll see it's very, very general. And they're calling me names. Calling me names. What kind of names? Let's see. Are we 13? So given the fact that you're on TikTok, there might be some people that actually are that young. So that is kind of a stupid thing to ask. I'm sorry. I don't really know what else to say. I have to keep it real. That is not intelligent <laughs> they very well could be 13 or maybe they're 15 is it that big of a difference like you're an adult you don't know if they are is my point i'm an adult and you're picking apart my character so i don't know if she's kind of having a boomer moment here but People online, they do pick people apart. It's just a part of being online. It's a part of activism, unfortunately. I think we need to definitely calm down some of the rhetoric in terms of like political rhetoric and stuff. I think it can be too much and it's so unproductive and it's just kind of like a sideshow. You know, it's for entertainment purposes. A lot of people view politics as entertainment and I don't. I understand that it has to be somewhat entertaining, but it's also like, I don't know. I just, I don't see how she would be so unaware of this. This is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Unaware of the cultural backdrop that she's currently in. So again, it makes me have doubts about what she's saying. It makes me doubt her sincerity and my health and my fatness and my queerness and all the things. Wow. Congratulations. Does that make you feel better about yourself? 
So I will just say, I hope I never respond to haters like this because it doesn't ever work. I think the best response is kind of no response. You know, I think I've learned and realized that what you feed is what grows. So her responding to this, it's going to beget more hate because people will see her as kind of a joke. And again, the internet, there are a lot of like, there's certain things with online culture. It can be a lot, but if you can't handle it, then maybe you shouldn't be doing this. You know, you might not be well enough to do this. I'm going to keep it a hundred. You might not be. I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to say what I'm going to say. That's fine. But people will also say what they're going to say. So it kind of renders this whole thing unimportant to even make. It's like a point that doesn't even really need to be made other than I think she's trying to make herself feel better or make herself feel like she's above everybody. And if you don't like it, there's this thing that they invented. It's called scroll on by. You don't have to be here to berate me and to say shitty things about me. You don't know me. I'm just somebody on a screen. Sure, but you're also advocating for a deadly ideology. Let's be real. So when you do something like that, it upsets people. That's why I'm commenting on you. Otherwise, yeah, I don't know you. I'm not going to personally attack you and stuff, but I will point out where I feel like maybe you're lying or I don't trust what you're saying just because things are weird or not adding up. Like it's very hard for me to believe that you're so naive that you don't understand how internet culture works, especially at your age, that you would have a zero concept of it. I'm not buying it. So I just think, well, why is she making this then? I question your intentions when I see this because I'm like, this can't be true. And then I already know you're lying because you said that your size doesn't affect your health. So I'm like, what is really your goal here? What is the point? And I can't help but think that it's in, an incredibly toxic point where you are simply wanting to spread a very harmful ideology to younger generations. And then you get upset if anybody says anything against you. And I cannot stand by. I can't stand behind that. Like, I have to say something. You force people to have to say something sometimes. And I get it that not everybody is eloquent. And I don't think that just attacking her is productive because then she'll just re and do this. And oh my gosh, no, no, no. But people are going to do it eventually because you're promoting something horrible it is what it is you don't know what i've done in my life the thing is is that it doesn't really matter because of what you're currently doing people are only commenting upon what you're doing i'm not commenting on any other aspect of your life i'm commenting on fat acceptance rhetoric the fact that you stand behind it very specific and i'm commenting on the fact that it takes lies to prop up fat acceptance rhetoric because it isn't based on anything. To support people? To support myself? I don't know. Tell us then. To support my community? Tell us then. To support BIPOC people? Tell us then. How are you supporting them? How are you supporting everybody? And people who are marginalized, you don't know what I've done. Tell people then. But I feel like if she was pressed, there wouldn't be much to say. Because what if I didn't feel like you were helpful? Then what? And this is the thing that gets me about people like her is in one hand, She'll say that she doesn't like it if somebody asks her if she's concerned for her health. She feels like that isn't helpful 
that maybe she should question is what I'm doing for all these groups of people actually helpful? Because all I can see and the only evidence that I see is what she's doing for fat people. And it is not helpful at all. So I don't know if she really questions that. And what I continue to do, you don't know that I continue to learn and grow and that I'm not perfect like every human that I actually live in a C letter grade that says I can give myself compassion and kindness and understand that I'm learning and growing and that I'm not going to always get it right. Okay. And as a part of that, you should feel the same way towards other people. So, for example, I completely disagree with your entire rhetoric, with what you're doing on this app, but I can still, deep within, think about your perspective and think about situations where I felt similar to how you're feeling. And... I don't know. I think sometimes you just need to know. Like you need to figure it out. But I don't know if you have a moral fiber in your being because this is so obviously wrong that I question you. It does make me question your character. I think people have a right to question your character. They do. You know, and I think it's a little bit gaslighty to sit here and act like, why should anybody question my character? It's because you're promoting a deadly ideology to young people. I wish you could live in that mm -hmm. that C letter grade too. Maybe you'd be less of an asshole. See, then it's just about putting other people down while acting like the victim. Again, so it's, I'm a good person, I'm amazing, I'm persecuted, and you're horrible. It's interesting. Very interesting. And more of somebody who could actually have compassion and kindness and empathy. Yeah, so when I first filmed this, that part, it really made me angry. But it's for reasons that I've already said. I don't view her as compassionate or as having empathy, or as kind. Pushing people towards their death is not kind. Lying to people is not kind. This isn't kind. This is cruel. This is horrible. And I'm not going to just not criticize it. I'm sorry. For another human being. So stop being a prick. So by her standards, she probably feels that somebody is a, a prick if they criticize her. But maybe she's talking more on a personal level. But regardless, I'm not going to say anything on a personal level other than that I feel that she's a liar. That's all I'm going to say. In terms of anything else, I don't know her other than the rhetoric, and the rhetoric is horrible. Be kind. Okay, so let's get to the next one. You know that your body doesn't know the difference between a diet and a famine? So, this is 100% not true. <laughs> Essentially, the difference between a diet and a famine is that in a famine, you are not getting proper nutrition. Within a diet, as long as it's a balanced diet, you are getting vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Your body doesn't run on calories alone. Your body takes cues from different kinds of fats that you eat, different kinds of vitamins and minerals that are present in the diet. Um, that will communicate a lot to your body about if you're in a famine or not. So when you say that, it 
to me sounds like a lot of ignorance and like you're approaching a very complex topic such as fatness and weight loss with an extremely black and white rigid thought process that is extremely simplistic and only views it as if I'm not eating as much calories as as I feel is necessary, then I'm in a famine or then my body sees me as starving. That's not true. Your body can feel like it's starving even with excess calories if you are malnourished. It's more about the nutrition rather than the calories. The calories do matter, but as a super morbidly obese person, you already have stored energy and being in a slight caloric deficit is not going to bring any harm in terms of your body feeling that you're starving. All it will do is create a sense of limitation, which you're probably resisting, which a lot of people resist because it's not always fun to have healthy limits and healthy boundaries. Sometimes it takes work, which work, eh, you know, yeah, it's work. It's not always fun. Your body's going to react the exact same way. No. My body, I am in a slight caloric deficit right now. It's actually quite late at night. My body feels completely calm. Why? Because I did hormonal work. I avoided lots of seed oils and stuff for years, and I am calm. Within a deficit in the dead of winter, and I am damn proud of it because it took me a lot to work to this point within my hypothyroidism to get here. And I am grateful, very grateful. But my body does not feel like it's in a famine whatsoever. Whatsoever. You lose weight initially, and then you plateau. Well, if you lose weight and then you plateau, usually you have to either take a breather or it could be seasonal. So it could have to do with the coming winter solstice. That's very big, especially if you are super morbidly obese. So think about the time of the year, hmm, you know? Um, Or it could mean that you need to tighten up your diet a little bit um i mean there's a lot of different things that you could do within a plateau or you could just chill maybe your body is just re- doing recomposition at that point and you need to just calm down you don't have to lose weight as fast as possible it's just not necessary and then you regain you don't always regain but even if you do it's typically less than what you did before unless if you're just doing a diet that is not nutritious that lacks nutrition or cuts out entire food groups then you may be slowing your metabolism further but if you're not then you almost never put all the weight back on and most of the time a lot of it is water especially within a hypothyroid super morbidly obese framework Which, yes, when thinner people try to lose weight, they don't always gain massive amounts of water weight if they step off the diet. But those of us that are big, we can put on huge amounts of weight, even 10, 15, 20 pounds, you know? So keep that in mind. You have to, like, understand that realistically, your body is only losing about two pounds of fat per week and it's probably going to take around the same to gain that weight, to gain fat too, unless if you're eating like 15,000 calories a day or something, but hardly anybody is doing that. Because that's incredibly difficult to sustain. So you have to keep a caloric realism. And I think a lot of us that are very big, we struggle with that because we focus so much on the scale But the scale is not the be-all, end-all. Like, you have to stay reasonable. Just stay reasonable. It's I get that it's hard. There's certain hormonal changes that happen in weight loss. It can be hard to stay reasonable for those reasons. But you got to make an effort to do it then. 
Why do we regain? Because your body's saying, holy shit. It's because possibly because you're eating a lot more. So again, there can be two different takes. If you're not eating a nutritious or balanced diet, then you could be eating a lot more because your body feels malnourished. If not, then it just has to do with the fact that you're eating more just because you feel like it. So that could be the case too. But think about it realistically. Why are you eating more? Maybe you're eating more because we're getting towards winter. That could happen too. You know, that happens to me. It's happened to me every December. Every single one. Um, so you have to think about these things. It is what it is. You know, but just try to think holistically and think about the entire picture so I, i'm trying i'm trying to change the conversation here i always say compare yourself to a year ago where were you a year ago are you better off or worse off if you're worse off then that's a problem we're in a famine so any food that comes in needs to stick around to protect us for the next famine it doesn't make sense, though, because if someone like you is eating all the time, then by that logic, the weight would just be falling off. That's not exactly how it works. And you know it. I know it. We all know it. If you're eating a lot, then you're going to gain weight. If you're eating a lot, then you're going to maintain a large weight. That's it. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. So, I don't know. Science. That is science. <sighs> sure. So stop dieting and start living. Okay. So I don't think that something like this could be explained within a singular TikTok video because it's just honestly too much to just state in like a minute, which is a huge issue because all nuance goes out the window. So if a lot of people hear that, especially if they're super morbidly obese or very fat, they're going to hear her say that and they're going to say, okay, then I, I'm just going to eat 6,000 calories a day, 5,000 calories a day. 4,000 calories a day, forever. And I'm just going to gain and gain and gain. You got to keep some kind of caloric realism. We're aiming for a slight calorie deficit. And again, like I had some nutritional issues last year, which is also why I ate a lot in November and December. I needed to shift my sugar consumption, which I did now and I should be good. But also the winter solstice was coming and it's just one of those difficult times of the year for dieting. And it is a time of re reflecting. You know, you have to reflect and make a change likely for the next year. Um, usually for me, I level up my carbohydrates. So like in 2023, I pretty much cut out grains for the whole year of 2023. And now in 2024, I'm cutting out added sugar. So I've leveled up the carbs further and um, still counting calories and doing that stuff, but it does help with weight loss in that sense. And I've also reached a point of health where I can handle not having sugar anymore. So you just kind of progress year over year and that's how you eventually get out of this. It's not usually a straight shot for somebody that's super morbidly obese. It's usually... You lose, then you gain some back, and then you lose, and then you gain some back, and you slowly make your way out. It's kind of like when you're drowning in a tank or something, and then the water is slowly coming down. It kind of comes up, and then it goes down again. It comes up, and it goes down. But if you're patient, then it, it will pass. You will get out. So that's the truth. So there is hope. But it's like, it's just so, it's such a difficult thing 
to talk about. I think that's why a lot of these videos get longer because it's very, very complex within obesity. So I hope that that helped clarify some things. If you guys liked it, please subscribe. I really appreciate you. It really helps the channel to subscribe, like, etc. And we're going to continue on. I'm going to do many more videos on this. I'm really feeling the fat acceptance right now. I'm ready to dive in, especially after my new information and perspectives I've gained from another year of doing this journey. So I will talk to you guys again very soon. Have a good rest of your day, night, whatever. Peace.